welcome to the Freeman Perspective. Today we're going to talk about corporate logos and their occultic meaning. Every day we pass by hundreds of symbols, but could it be that there's a hidden power behind these symbols? Could it be that there's something more here than meets the eye? Everywhere I looked into history, I continually came across one group. They were known as the Freemasons. They seemed to be affecting everything all around the world. No matter where I looked, their symbols were popping up on everything. Even my father was a Freemason, worshipful master of a German lodge, and he chased flying saucers for the government, built nuclear missiles, and was on submarines with Jimmy Carter. Seems that if you're a Mason, you get a few more privileges. So to get to the history of America, we need to understand what these guys are about. They seem to have a lot to do with it. If we look at this list here, 50% of our presidents have belonged to a single fraternity. Either these are the greatest men in the world, or there's a conspiracy going on here. I found also that Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere, even Benedict Arnold were all Freemasons. But a few missing from this list are Lincoln, Kennedy, and Nixon. So I went to the Temple of the 33rd, the Supreme Mother Council of the World, which turns out to be the first American public library. A good way to control information. But as I walked past those large sphinxes and went up to that giant lion knocker door, I hesitated there. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to go inside this place. But as I stood there thinking about it, a brother came up behind me, I didn't see him show, and another opened the door. And they looked to me and said, well, what do you want? And I said, well, I'd like to see the library. So they said, well, come on in. So we walked down the hypostyle hall with these large black columns, Masonic regalia in the middle. As we strolled down, they told me I wasn't allowed to be alone. We went past the little Egyptian fellows and into the reading room. And there they have the busts of many philosophers and many great books. One of the philosopher's books that I was interested in was Mr. Manley P. Hall. He's the American of the president of the American Society and writes of uh, things like Atlantis, where this brotherhood says they're from. Well, in my excitement wandering around, I ran across a nice lady. She asked me if I'd like to take the tour. I said, absolutely. So she took me upstairs. And along the way, she says, no, this place is haunted. And I told her I wasn't surprised. So we went to the J. Edgar Hoover room, and I sat down and played with his gold-plated phone. And I looked at his boxing gloves. And then the Burl Ives room, where all his albums were put up on the wall. Into the Pillars of Charity, where the busts of Pike and Cole are there. And she says their ashes are kept here. And inside that little cubby there are hundreds of names of Freemasons. And she says, now, when you donate your first million, you'll get your name up here. There are hundreds of names up there. Not surprising. They do rule the world. She took me to the Hall of Honors just to check out the notable 33rd degree Freemasons. I saw many that I recognized. I saw a picture of uh, Harry S. Truman, Gene Autry, General MacArthur, John Glenn, Bob Dole, even Arnold Parmel's at 33rd. And no, his picture wasn't up there. But Michael Richards had been to the temple the week before I got there. And they were all making a lot of stink about it. <laughs> Kept waiting for him to crack a joke, but he didn't. He took this very seriously. Seems that if you uh, have your name on something, or have a city or a street named after you, you're most likely a Freemason. Just like Stephen J. Austin here. This picture is in the local lodge here in Austin. But what is this all about? She took me to the temple room, and here I strolled up to the big Belgian black altar, 
to have a little closer look at maybe what these guys are doing. I looked around and went up to the worshipful master's seat, but I didn't sit in it. Not this time. So I still wasn't too sure just what was going on in here. Well, it seems that it's ritual magic. This brotherhood pra practices a form of magic known as Kabbalism. So, and look at the definition of Kabbalism. Try to get an idea of what's up. Kabbalism is a Jewish mystical tradition teaching godhood to man. It's the foundation of most post-Egyptian Western magical systems. Since the Kabbalah is based on the Hebrew language, the degree of one's knowledge of that language is the degree which one can understand the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is also known as hidden wisdom. Madame Helena Pilotrovita Velatsky, the founder of the Theosophical Society, she defines the Kabbalistic magic as the art of divine magic consists in the ability to perceive the essence of things in the light of nature and by using the soul powers of the spirit to produce material things from the unseen universe. And in such operations, the above and the below must be brought together. Magic is spiritual wisdom. Arcane knowledge misapplied is sorcery. So she believes that she can manifest into the real world. Now, Aleister Crowley is certainly the most infamous magician out there, known as the Antichrist and the Beast, says simply that magic is the science and art of causing change to occur with conformity of the will. Magic was the highest knowledge of natural philosophy and the magician differed from the witch in this, that while the latter was an ignorant instrument in the hands of the demons, the former had become their master. So, using demons to create reality in the real world. Alistair Crowley was contacted by an extraterrestrial. His name was Owas, and he channeled a book to Alistair Crowley known as the Book of the Law. This very book is housed here in Austin at the Harry Ransom Center. And I went up there to check it out, but a strange man came along, kind of gave me the eye, and they weren't going to let me film it anyway, so I left. But let's see what Owas told Crowley. He says, I am the snake that giveth knowledge and delight and bright glory and stir the hearts of men with drunkenness. To worship me take wine and strange drugs whereof I will tell my prophet and be drunk thereof. They shall not harm ye at all. It is a lie, this folly against self. The exposure of innocence is a lie. Be strong, O man, lust. Enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any god shall deny thee for this. Hmm. Do as they will is one of the uh, codes used within the OTO. And another Kabbalist who uh, had a lot to do with the creation of the modern day Freemasons has a book called Morals and Dogma and it talks a bit about the magic. He says, The ancient astronomers saw all the great symbols of masonry in the stars. Sirius still glitters in our lodges as the blazing star. The sun is still symbolized by a point within a circle, and with the moon and Mercury or Anubis in the three great lights of the lodge. Not only to these, but to the figures and numbers exhibited by the stars were ascribed peculiar and divine powers. So they believe these symbols have divine, peculiar powers, able to perhaps affect you. They practice the magic that the ancient Egyptians did. They might have heard of the Egyptian magicians in the Bible dueling with Moses. Well, when you stand before the word.